I'm Tracy Mattel. And I'm Katya. And welcome, welcome to, to our, our show. show. Our topic this week, <sighs> we're gonna talk about our dream funerals, test people's knowledge of deadly diseases, and show you how to survive any natural disaster. Death, the final frontier. The dirt nap. Well, I don't call it dying. I call it going to play Sega Saturn with Brittany Murphy. Okay, I, yeah, I'm into that. Are you afraid to die? Do you think about that? I think about it a lot. I'm not afraid to die at all. You aren't? No, I'm afraid of pain. I don't, want to, I don't want to be tortured for months and months and months. I'm not afraid of it though. You know, I get like weirdly serene in like planes because I'm like, oh, if it yeah. goes down, oh, thank God. whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, to do those three I'm like, no tomorrow. kidding. Yeah. Oh, oh Jesus. Freedom of responsibility is, makes me horny. Completely. You know what I mean? like, as, as the plane careens toward sea level, I'm just going to be like, I don't have to do my taxes. Yeah. You don't have to do if the plane went down to. I'd be, grab the person next to me, their hand, and go. Well, that's it, just the whole that's time. That's it. Just, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, what's gonna happen? I'm not saying we shouldn't get to choose how we die, and it's a horrible thing. I would to love to. About. I would love to. Okay, I always fantasize about being murdered, not tortured, but murdered. Three shots in the clavicle, her face ripped off, <laughs> and her legs chopped to <laughs> bits. So specific. But what was the way you wouldn't want to die? Ultimate. Honestly, scary. none of them sound great. <laughs> And I know that it's too wishful to be like, in my f***ing sleep. But I guess I would want to die in my sleep. I think a really aggressive paras uh, gastrointestinal parasite in the jungle would be awful. Buried alive is pretty bad. And yeah. I don't have the upper body strength to get out of there. No. <sighs> Ow. Yeah, this is fine. My perfect funeral it would be just like my wedding. $150 ticket, limited seating, and there would be a helicopter, some kind of explosion, and then good food. That's it. Like in and out, in and out. <laughs> I want, um, I'm in a wake, I'm wearing a, a white t-shirt that's a 4X that has Tweety Bird on it that says, attitude is everything. <laughs> and I'm holding a, and I'm holding. That is, oh, that, oh, and I'm I holding that. a koozie that <sighs> says, I got up today, what else do you want? <laughs> and they have me in 3D glasses, propped up like I'm playing my 3DS. And your 3DS is on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at weddings, you have faux pas, never or white. At funerals, never show up dead. Well, if it's your funeral, then. Oh, yeah, then it's fine. Yeah. yeah and also, if you are an A-list celebrity, give a B-list celebrity a little bit of wiggle room. Let them die for a couple weeks before you kick the bucket. So no kidding. take their shine. Princess Diana eclipsed Mother Teresa's death just, I mean, blew her out of the water. And that is so like her. Yeah. Oh, what's gonna happen to your body when you die, you think? It decomposes. It gets Bitch, sexy. duh. But like, do you get cremated? Uh, Don't, the space, what? Donated science all the way. They're gonna cut you open and say, this is what happens when you cross-dress and smoke your whole life. And they're gonna <laughs> open your body and f***ing smoke the and bats. Come out. They're gonna fall out. Ed McMahon will come out wrapped in seaweed, be like, that was a thrill. What do you want people to see you in your casket in? Looking like King Tut. Okay. Yeah, just King Tut. All the, the wrestler? Way. The jewel down on 45th. <laughs> <laughs> I, look, I'm super old-fashioned country Native American family. Yeah, what do you we want to do? We just burn that f like the Burn the f Throw it in the woods. My grandma passed away last year. What are we gonna yeah. do? Hang on to her body? For what? It's just your grandmother's body. It's not your grandmother. Give some uh, birds something to eat. Yeah, that's a lot more than I said. I think all my favorite people will be present. I will walk into heaven. It'll be a picket fence, a nice pastel. <laughs> Paul Rudd is mowing the grass, and I bring him out some lemonade, and then we have sex on the AstroTurf. Uh -huh. We don't have kids, because he can't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. And you're not He's on DUI. Pregnant. What is it? IUD. DUI. Ah! <laughs> he doesn't have a DUI. He, had a DUI. he, has he a also IUD. has a DUI, yeah. Legal requires us to inform you that Paul Rudd has not received a DUI, and Trixie is just bad at words. His IUD is his DUI. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and it's beautiful. And the Spice Girls are together. Does oh. Victoria know how to sing in this one? Ah! <laughs> My version of heaven would be like a lucid dream, have you, have you had a lucid dream? They're amazing. Oh, a dream where you know you're dreaming. Exactly. I had sex with my um, neighbor. Okay. I said, you are going to want to have sex with me. In the dream? I magic tricked him. If you don't accept if me. you accept me by David Blaine, you don't deserve me at my Chris Angel. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Okay, 
So death is not the end, it's just the beginning. The beginning of what nobody knows or cares. Do you think that ghosts are like reachable to us, like Otome Brown situation? No, I think that that is a wonderful and ingenious smoke screen that certain um, magician type people can provide for others. It's like a version of psychotherapy. Yeah. But, but they're not. If they're dead, they're dead. I mean, it's so selfish to think that all these ghosts are milling around your like stupid, boring ass when they're dead. No, no kidding. what's the point of ghosts? They're not I gonna f me, get out of my house. No. Teach me a lesson, don't patronize me though, and do something, but if you're gonna just like make my life a living hell, then go f yourself. In honor of today's show about death, we're gonna play a little game called He, he Did. did. So this is how this is gonna work. I'm gonna give you a name of a famous legend icon star, and you have to tell me whether they are dead or alive, okay? Oh, this is gonna be easy. Bob Barker. Oh, dead, 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 dead. Dead as the day is long. Corpse. Survey says he's alive. <laughs> well, he should That's so be so disrespectful. Dead. All right, Liz Claiborne. That's a real person? I, dead for years. Survey says. Civil War. Dead. Oh, yeah. Who is that? She invented hiking. <laughs> Corey Feldman. He is still with us, unfortunately. I saw him in the Katy Perry TGIF uh, music video like five years ago. He's gotta be alive. Survey like says that. he's alive. Yep. Angela Lansbury, dead or alive? Angela Lansbury is alive. Yeah, she's alive and well. Tale as old as time. Yeah, song as old as mine. Rhyme. Rhyme. Mary Kate and Ashley, trick question. They hover they were between never worlds. <laughs> they were never alive in the first place. <laughs> yeah. That show Sliders, it's about that. <laughs> oh, Phil Donahue. Who is that? Exactly. Alive. Yes. Ah! <laughs> Chubby Checker. He, yeah. Chubby Checker, Double Decker. Survey says he's alive. He's cheating death as we no, speak. No, no. Cuba Gooding Jr. He's alive. We just did American Horror Story okay. last year. Okay. Terry Hatcher. What kind of yearbook from the 30s? Leonard Cohen. He's not alive. That's true. Yeah, that's right. Mary Todd Lincoln. She's dead. She's still alive. Really? No. Were you at Marty McFly's mom and dad's prom? <laughs> like, how old are you? <laughs> Do you know this shit? I squeeze the juice out of life every year. <laughs> well, thank God the boundaries between life and death are thick and impenetrable. No, this game should uplift you because it goes to show you that it's not about whether or not you're really dead. Your legacy can outlive you and always will. Yeah, it's how famous you are. So you've made a bunch of great movies or you killed a bunch of kids. Yeah, unless you're on, on TV, you're basically dead already. <laughs> now we've told you what we think. It's time for you to ask us some questions. This is called Asking for a Friend. If you found out you had one week to live, what would you do? I would probably have some sex with about three or four people I have in mind. Uh -huh. Play my PlayStation. First I'd like pay off my brother's mortgage or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Then I'd take all my cash and like a little Santa sack and go door to door and like reenact all of my past revenge fantasies. So like, you know, vendettas, like, you know what I mean? Like from the, you're too scared to kind of like tell somebody off, I'd do it to strangers, then give them like five grand. Oh. Yeah. So these aren't the real people. No, so no, like no. some guy in your building and you're like, listen, Tommy from eighth grade. Yeah, even on death's door, I wouldn't have the courage. But yeah, absolutely, it would be great. Which celebrity had the best funeral? Well, I mean, what are we, we're saying best, what do we mean? Most lavish, most sad, like what? Did the most famous people attend? Yeah. Probably John Lennon, right? I mean, I have these, these images of people like. John Lennon, oh, I thought you meant Elton John. He's not dead. Breaking news. So, Elton John Lennon. Who's gonna sing Candle in the Wind at his funeral, though? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Rebecca Black. Rebecca Black. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, have you ever hit on people at a funeral? This is fun. The thing is, it's usually family, so yes. Oh, please. <laughs> Where would you want your ashes scattered? Okay, so I've gone through the whole gamut. I'm not sure if I wanna be buried, um, cremated or donated to science or shot into space. Ashes can be split up, baby. What do you mean by that? Your ashes can be set into fourths. Some of you in space, some of you at Chuck E. Cheese. I don't know, whatever you want. Oh, okay, all right. Or even just the last piece. So the last part of you, I just wanna lock eyes with the camera and go. So at my funeral, the open casket, there'd just be a leg. Yeah, and when I get shiny, I dip, I dip a little puff into your ashes and I just. That's disgusting. What do you think is the weirdest tradition surrounding funerals? <gasps> I think open caskets. 
Um, Don't you think? Duh. Yeah. Oh, remember your loved one? Let's look at a chalky, still cold version of them and burn that into your mind forever. Yeah. Let By the way, your aunt had a stroke and we had to drill holes in her head, so she's wearing a bandana for the 49ers when she was a Packer fan. <laughs> what? <laughs> Hey, great questions, everyone. Good job. We can't guarantee that we'll help you, but we will never judge you because... You're always asking for a friend. So the hallmark of every true narcissist is fantasizing at length about what people would say at your funeral, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I would, um, what would you say to mine? If you were to die tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> when you die tomorrow. Here lies the body of Yekaterina Petrovna Zomolochkova. She died doing what she loved, which was chain smoking and ashing into an iced coffee outside of a Dunkin' Donuts. I can still hear her screams. Amen. Here lies the grizzled corpse of a mannish pretend woman, Trixie Joanne Elizabeth St. Clair Dupree Mattel. She was a, a Midwest girl with a song in her heart and a dime bag in her pocket. She didn't do drugs and she never drank, except every day. She was a, she was a big tittied spender who just loved to be thrifty. She had a haircut that could just peel the paint, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and now it's time to bask in the compliments of our many fans. It's Mailbag. Now, I know in the past, some of our fan mails have been comments painted negative and positive, unsolicited remarks, inputs, and desires about our looks. But that's all over now. This one's for me. It says, someone with your face shape should wear bangs or stay home. It kind of has a point. Well, that was Mailbag. What are you looking at? I'm looking at a person who needs some real estate. Real estate, real estate, houses, sheds, apartments. Money is confusing and people are fickle friends. So what are you to do in an unstable marketplace? Ask me, Barbara Mae Bonaducci. Real estate is a lifestyle. Call me now. I'm a real estate agent and a psychic and a really bad cook. My former manager asked me, what kind of commissions are you taking? I know you're skimming off the top. I said 20%, he didn't believe me, I killed him. Have you ever been on a boat? Let's do it now! If you act now, I'll throw in a jet ski, tractor, a tetherball court. Call now. If you see Barbara Mae Bonaducci, do not approach her. Call Homeland Security immediately. Wow, all day we've heard from two real women. Yeah, it's just covered in period juice in here. Let's get a masculine perspective. Mm. Broskies? Bro? Odds are you're probably gonna die of some disease. Yeah. But do people know the difference between real diseases and ones we've made up? We're about to find out. This is fake or fatal. Let's, Let's go. go. <gasps> what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you some diseases and you're gonna say, are they real or are they not real? Okay. Werewolf syndrome. Um, oh. Real. Yes. Do you know what it is? <laughs> Um, like hair growing on you, like people that have like at the mouth. sharp teeth, like <laughs> not the here. teeth, but on the face. <laughs> like face. Werewolf syndrome, not real. Uh, yeah. I think I have it on my back. Yeah. <laughs> Sudoku seizure, definitely fake. Definitely fake. Fake. Definitely fake. No. Uh, it's, real. it's real. It's when people, when doing math in your mind, it trips a seizure. What? People is have wrong seizures. With people? <laughs> if the puzzle's that hard, move on. MLS. MLS. Real. Hold on. Yeah, that is real. MLS. Oh, real. I'm gonna say that's fake because it's a soccer league. Boom! <laughs> MLS is a soccer, soccer league. league. Oh! <laughs> okay. well, it's not a disease, but it's real. <laughs> I'm saying, it's I got something you. real. Butterfly skin. Fake. Fake. I say fake too. Uh, butterfly skin. Yes. Yes! Oh my what god, is that? I'm a genius. <laughs> a disease that causes your skin to flake off at the slightest touch. Relatable. We can yeah. finally <laughs> diagnose you. <laughs> Tetris. No, that's a game. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. I got one, yes. I think you should be a doctor. <laughs> yeah. Dragon pox. I just held a snake, so I'm gonna say real. <laughs> it's fake, it's from Harry Potter. But if you believe in Harry Potter, it's real. Then it's real. Harry yeah. so real. Real. See? Yeah, this girl. <laughs> wow, people do not know if diseases are real. No. And if you or someone you love is suffering from MLS, please tell them it's a soccer league. <laughs> Back to you, ladies. Wow, that was alarming, shocking, and arousing.
Yeah, thanks guys, now go hump a Heisman Trophy. Is that okay? Let's face it, we're all gonna die. Now the trick is to fit in lots of cool activities before you do croak. So here's a list of cool stuff you should do before you die, for real. Make a fake Twitter to troll yourself. Open a checking account. Dance merrily on the grave of your stepfather. Suffer under the curse of a Hungarian witch. Stack a bump it on a bump it. And then, that stacked bump it. Swallow a Susan B. Anthony coin. Ask your brother what my vagina smells like. Pick up someone else's dry cleaning. Groundhog Day. Try consensual sex. Paprika. Self-tanner that won't break you out. <laughs> Melanoma. Learn to drive. Vehicular homicide. Speed dating. Amphetamine psychosis. Read your own tarot cards. Roll around in some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, follow our tips. And you'll be dead before you know it. Woo. 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 It's gift-giving season again. What to get the neo-futuristic scavenger among us who seems to have everything? Yeah, for the survivors among us, we present to you the Trixie and Katya Survival Kit. This kit has everything except a reason to live. <laughs> First up, we've got pita bread. Oh, no, it's a diaper. You know, it's the end of the world. Doesn't mean you need to get shiny. Oh, there you go. And look at that, the oil on my face is red. Oh. I don't know what that is. Oh my god. Oh, wow. I like that. That is sexy. Next up, beef stroganoff with noodles. It's dry like your hair and delicious like my pussy. Oh, biscotti. Now listen, this is an unconventional choice, but listen, you're in the jungle. You're at your wit's end. You stumble across a venti vanilla latte just sitting there right on the ground. What are you gonna soak up that gorgeous foam with? Not with beef stroganoff. This classic Italian snack. Of course, you can't get boiling water or stay alive without a fire starter. I would like a fire. And then God comes down and delivers you one. Now this is something no girl should be caught without in face of an apocalypse. A mauve lip color. Yeah, it may be the end of the world, but you're still a bitch. Well, there you go, guys. This is Trixie and Katya's survival kit. This could keep you alive. But it probably won't. Good luck. <gasps> we're floating heads now. Woo. Woo. Now this episode is all about death, so we're talking to a badass mortician. This is Trixie and Katya give a mortician heads. Joining us today is one of the funeral directors from Undertaking LA. Ooh. Welcome, Amber. Thank you. Tell us how your business is a little different. Undertaking LA puts a lot of focus back on the body, and a lot of times we don't even have a casket. It's You're just, yeah. Shut the f up. Yeah. So tell me, tell me. <laughs> Like, are they like on a wreath? It's called like a like a church truck or like a table. They're like laid out on that with little sheets. And it's like flowers? Look... flowers? Like Snow yeah. White? Yeah, kind uh, of like Snow White. Yeah. A slip and slide, they like fly <laughs> Exactly, they just slide so right It's almost 3.30, where is Bill? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Have you ever worked on someone that was so attractive that you thought you were falling in love with that person? <laughs> I have had people before that were like very handsome and it made me like sad and then I felt like I was really narcissistic in vain like oh this really beautiful person died how awful and then, and then oh, you're like, and then you're like cuz you're like if they were alive they would have been in love with me <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Is there anything you're trying to demystify about the process of death? So basically what we're trying to do is teach you that the body isn't scary. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, something about traditional funerals that makes the body seem like you're supposed to be scared of it. Right. And, and you're so, it's so reverent of a environment that you're almost on edge. How long does it take you to prepare a body for a funeral? I can do it by myself in like 15 oh minutes. And if I have a family help me, it takes about 45 minutes. And I know that dead skin is like pretty hard to have pigment stick to it. What do you use, like yeah. spray paint? Kachi puts makeup on dead skin every day. <laughs> How do you do it? Well, I don't know if it's a really great plug for Maybelline, but one of the homes. Maybe? Oh. Yeah, no, Maybelline uh, is what we used on all oh of my. our dead people. <laughs> Maybe she's born with it. <laughs> Maybe I... she'll die with it. Why this instead of real estate? I have like a super unexciting answer for why I got into the funeral business. You love to have sex with dead people. I... Oh, oh my God. God. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs>
just kidding. That would be an exciting uh, answer. No, I know. Yeah, she said she had a boring answer. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the answer is I had a friend that was a mortician, and it seemed really cool, and yeah. Batter busting tables it at Applebee's, yeah. yeah. Amber, thank you so much for being here. This is fascinating, and I can't wait to see what I look like when I'm dead. <laughs> You're welcome. I will take good care of you if you want to uh, use me for your services. Thank you, Amber. You're welcome. Thank you. And now it's the moment you've all been waiting for, things that make us go, mm. And this week, we're going, uh, for de-extinction. That's right. What's better than an extinct species? Bringing it back. Scientists are using woolly mammoth DNA, for example, to bring back those creatures. They could if they wanted to. I don't believe it. It sounds like climate change. First of all, we should be working most recent to most late. We okay. don't need a woolly mammoth as much as we need, like... Oh, yeah, like ravens from the medieval times. Yeah. yeah. This is, like, uh, the ultimate redemption. Plus, these dodos can walk into their high school reunions. Like, bet you thought you saw the last of me. Surpresa, bitches. Yeah, totally. Yeah. What about, it, like, a pterodactyl? Is that, like, a real... Was that a myth or is that a dress? No. That <laughs> was a pterodactyl myth. The dinosaur. The thing is, I don't need us to bring back novelty creatures that literally have no place in this world. Look, we made a velociraptor. What, is it gonna run around the tar pits? Life finds a way. Ah! <laughs> wow, that was a great episode about a really tough topic. You know, it's something none of us really know anything about. We can only speculate. Are you afraid of dying? Not as afraid as I am of living, actually. <laughs> yeah, same. Well, thanks for joining us. Until next time, don't, don't die. die. Bye. Bye. Don't die. Don't do it. Bye.